In this video, I'm going to show you how you can become a mathematical wizard. You can basically break down all of mathematics into four levels. Level one is the apprentice. At this level, you are focusing on learning basic mathematics. By basic mathematics, I mean pre-algebra, intermediate algebra, college algebra, calculus, trigonometry, pre-calculus, basic stuff that you learn. And most people are at the apprentice level. One thing that characterizes this level from the other levels is that apprentices do not know how to write proofs. This is all computational based mathematics. The emphasis is to gain as much exposure and as much practice as you can so that when you go to the next levels, you have a strong foundation. In this video, I'm going to give you books that you can use to master the apprentice level. Level two is the magician. Magicians are focused on learning to write mathematical proofs. This is a struggle. It is one of the hardest things that people who are learning math have to do, but it is worth the struggle because once you learn to write mathematical proofs, you can progress to level three and become a warlock and start learning all kinds of mathematics. In this video, I'm gonna show you some books that you can use to progress to the next level of warlock. Level three is the warlock. This is the level where you are trying to learn all of the undergraduate mathematics that you can, and it is still a struggle. You still encounter situations where you're not sure if your proofs are correct. You have doubts and you don't know if what you're doing is correct. But at the same time, you have some ability. You have the ability to write mathematical proofs and you've made it this far in the progression. You're actually writing proofs. You're just not a master yet. Warlocks can learn all kinds of math on their own, but it's still a struggle. And that's what separates warlocks from wizards. Wizards have an easier time learning higher level mathematics. At level four, you are a mathematical wizard. You have the ability to pick up any book on mathematics and learn mathematics on your own. This is the highest level of mathematics. This is research level mathematics. It doesn't mean you have to do research. It just means that you have the ability to absorb and learn higher level mathematics on your own. This is where you wanna be and this is where you wanna get because you can always learn math from previous levels when you get to this level and the world becomes yours. You become a mathematical wizard. This is a good starting point for someone who has been away from mathematics for a very long time. The subject is pre-algebra and almost all of these books are widely available. So these first two are easy to find. You can find them online and I'll try to leave links in the description. I will also try to look for this one in case you want to check it out. So this book here, Essential Pre-Algebra, Skills Practice Workbook by Chris McMullen, PhD, is a great book because it has answers to every single problem and so you can work through it and check your work. You can also write in this book, it's an actual workbook, it is not really considered a textbook, but it's quite affordable and it's worth it if you're trying to brush up your pre-algebra skills. Another really good, widely available modern book is this one here, Everything You Need to Ace Pre-Algebra and Algebra One in One Big Fat Notebook. This book is really fun, it teaches you a lot of mathematics and it's got really, really cool pictures. So perfect for someone who is just trying to get back into mathematics. The last one I want to show you is Pre-Algebra by Harry H. Jonas. I wanted to include this one because it's kind of a collectible. It's got a really cool cover and it's from the early 70s. So if you want an old school approach to mathematics, you can try to find this book. And again, I'll look for every single book in this video and I'll do my best to leave links in the description if I can find the books. Another subject that people who are studying level one mathematics study is geometry. So here I have three books. The first one being Shams' Outline of Geometry. This book is widely available and is a great reference for geometry. So it's worth having in your mathematical library. In fact, that's the only reason I have it. It's just a good reference. It pretty much has everything you're gonna need when you're studying other subjects. If you need some geometry, it's probably in this book. If you want a book that is a great choice for self-study, this is it. Everything you need to ace geometry in one big fat notebook. This book will guide you through everything. It has great illustrations, examples, and it has answers to every single problem. This is an awesome book for learning basic geometry. I had to include a collectible book in this list. And so here we have Geometry by Fisher and Hayden. And this book has some really interesting topics. I think this is way more advanced than the other books. It's also harder to find, but I'll do my best to find it. Look at that, Geometry on the Surface of the Sphere. You get all kinds of mathematics that you don't see in other books, in old geometry books 
like this one. Curved surfaces, area and volume, mapping, similarity, congruence, and symmetry. Yeah, really old school book. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the rest of these books really, really quickly so we can get to level two. This one is Everything You Need to Ace Math in One Big Fat Notebook. This is a highly accessible book. It's widely available and it has answers to all of the problems. This is a book that you can use to learn basic mathematics. Speaking of basic mathematics, we have the legendary Basic Mathematics by Serge Lang. This book is really unique because it has tons of topics. And while this is considered level one mathematics, just be warned, it does have some proof-based exercises. Elementary statistics is a subject that most people study in college. So it's definitely a level one mathematics. This is a highly computational stats book that is worth owning and worth reading if you are trying to learn statistics. Mathematical ideas. This is a book that you've probably never seen. This covers random math topics, but again, the level is pretty basic. So if you're in this level, if you feel like you can understand some of this material, you can definitely pick up this book and learn all kinds of cool mathematics. This is the Shams outline on probability and statistics. And this book is great for learning probability and statistics. It has really good examples and it has answers to a lot of the exercises. It's a great choice for self-studying probability and stats. This book is used in courses such as pre-calculus and trigonometry at various colleges. It's called Algebra and Trigonometry, and it's the second edition. It's by Stuart, Redlin, and Watson. I'm pretty sure there's a newer edition, but this book contains a behemoth of information. There is just so much math in this book, and a lot of people are at this level. This is what you study like before you take a calculus class. Here's a book that is just on trig. So a lot of the books cover algebra and trig, but this one is just trig. It's the one by McKeague and Turner. This is one of the best intermediate algebra books ever written. It's the one by Blitzer. Blitzer is a great author. His books are very easy to understand compared to a lot of the other books. And that's why they are so widely used at colleges today. So they're just solid books. This is a big thick book on intermediate algebra. It's gonna give you answers to all of the odd numbered exercises. And this is a textbook, right? I wanna emphasize that this is a textbook. So if you compare this to other books that are not textbooks, you're gonna get a lot more information in a book like this. This book is a workbook. It is not a textbook. It's called Trigonometry. Essentials Practice Workbook with Answers, Master Basic Trig Skills. This was written by Chris McMullen, PhD. And this book is a workbook, so it has exercises and it has answers to all of the exercises and you can write in the book. So it's a great supplement to an actual textbook on trigonometry. Here's another choice for intermediate algebra. This is the one by Alan R. Angel. Solid book for learning basic mathematics. It's good stuff. Okay, let's quickly go through the rest of these. We've got Algebra, Essentials Practice Workbook with Answers. This one is a workbook, so really good for people who are trying to you know, get better at basic math. It's got answers to all of the exercises and you can write in it. So this is a step up above his pre-algebra book. I like this book, I think it's worth it, and it's very, very affordable. If you want something more comprehensive, you can take a look at something like this one. This one is College Algebra Essentials by Blitzer. Essentials means that it's missing some of the sections that the regular college algebra has, but that's okay, it's a lot more affordable, and it's an actual textbook, okay? So it's got like some serious math in it, it's got definitions, it's got tons of exercises, and you get answers to all of the odd numbered problems. This is an excellent choice for someone who is trying to get better at algebra. If you feel you're not here yet, you can take a step back and look at something like this, Intermediate Algebra. This is the one by Miller, O'Neill, and Hyde. This is actually the first book I ever had on math because I used this for the first math class I ever took and I remember struggling, but it's a pretty good book and it's the one I use to get started with mathematics. And if you're looking for something more exotic, of course I like to include collectible books in my videos, we have Intermediate Algebra for College Students by Lewis Lighthold. So Lewis Lighthold was the inspiration for the real life Jaime Escalante from the 80s movie Stand and Deliver. So if you've seen Stand and Deliver, the main character was inspired by Lewis Lighthold. This guy was a legend and he wrote legendary books. And this book is pretty rare, but I'll try to find it. Now we have entered the world of calculus. So here we have Serge Lang's A First Course in Calculus. This is the third edition. There is a much newer edition available. And this book is pretty good. It's got all kinds of interesting topics, but it's not gonna have everything you need maybe 
for your courses in college, but it does have a lot of mathematics in it and it is going to make you better. Another really interesting book we have here is Differential Equations with Linear Algebra. So this is a book that teaches differential equations and also it has some linear algebra. In order to read this book, you want to know some calculus. So this is like the top level of level one, like you're almost at level two. You know, once you get past differential equations, that's really when you start approaching level two mathematics. This is a classic book on calculus. It's part of a series called Mathematics for Self-Study and it's written by Thompson. It's called Calculus for the Practical Man. This is the book or one of the books that the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman used to teach himself calculus. This is another workbook. It's called Essential Calculus Skills Practice Workbook. So this is one of those books that you can buy and basically use this to get a better grade in your class, right? Because these problems are carefully picked and they seem to be exercises that you would put on a test. You know, if I was teaching a calculus class, I would, you know, these are the types of test questions people would probably see or questions like this. So it's a great book if you're trying to get better at calculus. Everyone needs a big, thick calculus book in my opinion. And this is a great book. It's called Calculus and it's by Anton, A New Horizon. This basically has everything you need for Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. So you could take three semesters of calculus with this book. It's a huge, thick math book. Here we have a differential equations book. This is one that I have actually used to teach differential equations to college students in the past. This is a pretty good book. I've read portions of it and I've done most of the exercises uh, from various sections in this book. I'd say it's a pretty good book on differential equations and one worth trying if you're trying to learn the subject. We've got three big calculus books left in level one. We've got Calculus with Analytic Geometry by Swakowski. Super thick book, again, contains all the calculus you need. Then we've got The Calculus by Lewis Lighthold. This one is more rare because it's by Lewis Lighthold, but I believe there is a newer edition and I'll try to leave that info in the description. This is a legendary book. Yeah, this, is, this book really changed the way calculus books are written because it was the first book to really provide really clean examples and become popular, right? There might've been some other books that came before this one that were written in this format, but none I'm aware of. And this last one has a really cool psychedelic cover. It's called Calculus and it was written by Ellis and Gullick. I love the cover of this book. Level two mathematics, the magician. This is where you are trying to learn to write mathematical proofs. So what does it take to get to level two? It actually takes very little. It's all about you. If you decide that you feel like you know enough algebra and calculus and trig and differential equations, and you are ready to enter the world of proof-based mathematics, then by all means, jump into it and become a magician. Most people never see level two mathematics. It's really only math majors that have to take courses where they learn to write proofs. But once you master level two mathematics or at least get very good at it, you can jump to level three. Let's take a quick look at some of the books in level two. This is one of the first proof writing books I ever purchased. It's called Mathematical Proofs, A Transition to Advanced Mathematics by Chartrand, Palamini and Zhang. This book will teach you to write mathematical proofs. I think it's a great book. The biggest downside of this book might be the cost. It's a little expensive, but I think it's worth every penny. It's an excellent book for learning to write mathematical proofs. Perhaps a more affordable option is Proofs by Jay Cummings. And I reviewed this book in the past and Jay actually left a comment in the video. I thought that was really, really cool. This is a great book for learning to write proofs and it's super, super thick. I definitely recommend this book. This one is free. That's right, you can actually get this book for free on the internet. You can just search for a book of proof and you can download the book. You might be wondering if it's free, why do I have a copy? Because I decided to buy a physical copy. I wanted to have a physical copy that I could touch and feel. And so I went online and I bought one. So great book for learning to write proofs. I have read a few of the sections and I've probably done like 20 or 30 exercises from this book. And I think it's great. It's an excellent book for learning to write proofs. It is one of the better ones and it's free. I think this might be my favorite. I really hate to say it and I hate to admit it because I hesitated hard. I did not wanna buy this book, but people kept mentioning it last year in the comments and I caved and I bought it and it's great. This book has really good explanations and it's small so you can lay in bed and read it. 
how to prove it, a structured approach by Velman. He gives really crystal clear explanations of how to write mathematical proofs. Here is one that was recommended to me by a former professor. It's called How to Read and Do Proofs by Daniel Solo. Several of the people here on the channel have used this book and have praised it. It is a solid book on learning to write proofs. And this is the last one I wanna show you on proof writing. It's called An Introduction to Abstract Mathematics by Bond and Keen. I like this book a lot, probably because I've spent so much time reading it and working through it. I think it's a great book and another solid choice for learning to write proofs. The bad news is in order to progress to level three, you really want to have a strong command of proof writing. You should at least know how to write basic proofs. And that is hard. It takes a lot of time and effort. And that's why these books will help you. If you're wondering which book should you get, I say get all of them if you can. If you are tight on money, Get the free one, you can just download it. And if you have to pick one to buy, I'm gonna say get this one here, How to Prove It, A Structured Approach. I really, really think this is the best choice for anyone who is trying to learn to write proofs. And it's hard for me to say that because all of these books are so good and they're all great books. None of them are bad books. These are not bad books, they're all great. But this one is just a little bit better and I really like the size. You can kind of like lay in bed and read it. He just has really good explanations. Daniel Vellman does a wonderful job in his book. All right, let's go to level three mathematics. This is where it gets really, really interesting. This is level three mathematics, the warlock. You can see how many books we have here because at this point, you know how to write mathematical proofs. And once you know how to write proofs, the world is yours. So this is mathematics that typically math majors would study. So if you go to a college or a university, anywhere in the world, these are some of the things you would study. So let's take a quick look at some of the books I have here because there are so many books and so many topics. Real Analysis by Jay Cummings. If you recall, Jay Cummings wrote the proof book we talked about earlier. This is an excellent book on real analysis and it's very, very affordable compared to some of the other books. Look how thick that is. Super nice book on real analysis. You definitely want to know how to write proofs before jumping into real analysis. Basically, you're going to be doing something similar to calculus that you've done before, but you're going to be proving everything, which makes it much more challenging. I wanted to include discrete mathematics in level three because I feel like there are some proofs in here where you would benefit from already having some proof background, in particular in this book here. So I have them here in increasing order of difficulty. For beginners, we have discrete mathematical structures by Coleman, Busby, and Ross. This is a really nice book and it's very good for beginners who are studying discrete math. What is discrete math? Well, it covers logic, sets, counting, probability, proofs, statistics, graph theory, tons of topics combined into one subject, which is called discrete mathematics. This one is very affordable. It's a Dover book. Dover is a company that reprints old math books and makes them more affordable. It's called Introductory Discrete Mathematics by Balakrishnan. This book is significantly more challenging than this one. I've read various portions of this book and it's a great book and it's affordable. This one is a game changer, Concrete Mathematics, a Foundation for Computer Science, written by legends, right? Graham, Nuth, Potashnik. These people are legendary and this is a legendary book. This book is no joke, it is super hard and it definitely warrants level three mathematics. This is warlock level and it's got answers to all of the problems, right? Like not just answers, but like solutions. It's awesome, awesome book, but it is no joke. One of the things that characterizes level three mathematics being a warlock is again, your ability to write proofs. If you can write proofs in theory, you can pick up any of these books and you can start reading and you can start learning mathematics. That's why it is such a big deal to master level two. For example, let's just start looking at some of these books. This is Advanced Calculus by Creighton Buck. Solid book. This one teaches advanced calculus, but it introduces it from a multivariable and a single variable approach right from the beginning. So it makes it great for learning advanced calculus. There are easier advanced calculus books, but I do like this one and it's probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Here's another book we have, and this one's on partial differential equations. This is the one I actually used when I studied partial differential equations. It's pretty good. It's got some typos in the solutions, but it's pretty good. 
Two more for PDEs. We've got introduction to partial differential equations. This is the one by Greenspan. And then we've got another one here by Zach Maniglo and Tho. This is a Dover book, so it's super, super affordable. Introduction to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert. This book is interesting because I checked this out from the library several years ago, and I forgot what book it was. I thought, I like this book. I don't remember what it's called. And then one day uh, I found it and I bought it and it's a great book. It's really, really good for beginners. This is definitely easier than the book by Buck on advanced calculus. This gives you a much more introductory approach. Plus it's got a really, really cool cover, right? Bartle and Sherbert. Let's take a look at this pile here. We've got Introduction to Probability by John E. Frund. So this is a little bit more advanced, so it definitely warrants level three in my opinion. The Subject of Number Theory. This is the book by Long. This is a classic. I love this book. This is the first number theory book I purchased and it will teach you number theory. But again, you want to know how to write proofs. Here we have a more advanced book on probability and statistics for engineers. Here we have a wonderful book on analysis. Again, great for beginners. The one by Stephen Abbott. Wonderful book. Numerical analysis, that's right. Numerical analysis is something you can learn and study once you become a warlock. And this is a book that you can use to do it. Another numerical analysis book, and this one's a little bit more rare, and I don't know if you can see it, but it says usually there. Numerical methods that usually work. It's by Foreman Acton, what a cool name. Over here we have some more advanced books. Advanced Calculus by Fitzpatrick. This is the one I used as an undergraduate. Very tough, but it's probably one of the easiest books for beginners. Linear Algebra by Hoffman and Kunz. This is proof-based linear algebra, old school book. I included the legendary Spivak in level three because it really, really helps if you know some proof writing before you jump into Michael Spivak's legendary book. Over here we have another pile. Let's take a look at it. Complex analysis. For this, you're gonna wanna know how to write proofs and you're gonna wanna know some calculus. Beautiful subject. One of the nicest subjects you can study as an undergrad. This is the one by Saf and Snyder. Pricey book, but worth it. I think this is easier than the Brown book, which I actually don't have in this video, and it's more popular than this one, but this one I think is the easiest one for complex analysis. An entire book on logic. That's right, an entire book. That's something you don't see often. It's the one by Michalos. An abstract algebra book. I love this book. And another proof-based linear algebra book. This one's a little more modern, so you can think of this as a modern version of the book by Hoffman and Kunz. Let's take a quick look at some Warlock level books. We've got Introduction to Probability and Its Applications by Schaefer. This is a great book and you can find a solutions manual for it as well. Great for mathematical statistics. This one is good too, but it doesn't have answers. And this is the India edition. It's the one by Rice. Then we have a legendary book on abstract algebra by Israel Nathan Hurstein. Lovely book. I had a friend who worshiped this book. Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin. This is one that is, again, legendary, very hard to read, very rigorous. Rudin doesn't really explain things in a very nice way, but it's still a famous book. It's got like a cult following. My favorite abstract algebra book for beginners by Dan Saracino. Probably the most popular topology book in the world, right? Topology by Monkreis. So you can learn topology once you get to level three, once you become a warlock. This is kind of like the high end of level three, right? Topology is tough. Once you get past topology, you're really getting close to level four. Then we've got a classic here on advanced calculus by Hildebrand. Calculus of several variables by Goffman, going quickly here. We still gotta get to level four. I have way too many books. Well, there's no such thing. Here's a hardcore book by Weatherburn, Mathematical Statistics. Naive Set Theory by Paul Halmos. Applied Combinatorics by Fred Roberts, a whole book on combinatorics. And Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Zill. This is the same author of the Differential Equations book, which I was showing you earlier. The bad thing about this book is that it's a little bit pricey. Notice I have this international edition. Um, yeah, these, these can get pricey, but these books have so much content. Let's take a look at this last pile, Introductory Real Analysis. This is by Kolmogorov and Fomin. This is a Dover book, hardcore. I included this one because it's kind of strange, right? Plane and spherical trigonometry. This is not really taught in schools anymore, but I feel that having more maturity before reading this book will help you appreciate it more. And that's why I put it 
in level three. We've got two abstract algebra books, both great for beginners, the one by Frolet and the one by Penter. And then we have a classic book on functions of several variables. This is the one by Fleming. Um, this book is beautiful. This is a beautiful book. If you can find it, buy it. Um, it's just wonderful. We've got some more statistics, mathematical statistics. Two books here, one by Rost and one by Frund. Another partial differential equations book. This is the one by Miller. Great book. A book on combinatorics by Tucker. The book on graph theory by Gould. And an advanced calculus book by Fuchs. I have this book by Fuchs in Spanish, actually, which is really interesting. I have the Spanish version of this book. So how do you get to level four mathematics? How do you become a wizard? Well, basically, you want to have a lot of exposure to most of these topics. You don't have to know everything here, but you have to have some exposure to advanced calculus, to linear algebra, to topology, to complex variables. At least know the very basics of number theory. Just having exposure and knowing how to write proofs in these subjects will help propel you to level four. Most people need a mathematics degree in order to get to level four because this is what you learn with a math degree, right? You cover a lot of this information. And so to self-study this takes an eternity, but I think it's possible. I really think it is because people can do it, right? People have done it and you can do it. You can become a mathematical wizard. Okay, let's go to level four. This is level four mathematics, the wizard. You know you're at level four when you feel like you have had plenty of exposure to topics such as abstract algebra, advanced calculus, linear algebra, and you feel like you can pick up one of those books and you can read it and you can learn on your own. When you're at the point where you feel like you can pick up an undergraduate level math book and sit down and read it and learn, that's when it's time for level four. And that's graduate level because that's what you have to be able to do at the graduate level. You have to be able to learn new mathematics on your own. Let's take a look at some of these books so you can see what kind of mathematics wizards do. So Measure Theory by Halmos is a legendary book. Paul Halmos was a very famous mathematician. He passed away several years ago and he wrote many amazing books. Measure theory is something that first year graduate students see when they go to graduate school. It is extremely difficult and extremely hard. And if you are thinking about learning measure theory, my advice is get every single book that you can afford on measure theory and find every single resource you can and do your best. Here's another book by Halmos. This is called a Hilbert Space Problem Book. And it's exactly what it says it is. It's a problem book on Hilbert spaces. It's got tons of problems and it's got tons of solutions. It's an excellent book for someone looking for hard mathematical problems on Hilbert spaces. Then we have an advanced book on functional analysis by Narici. Pretty hardcore stuff here. You definitely want to be a wizard before you learn this. Another super hardcore book on functional analysis by Rudin. This one is really, really tough. And the easiest functional analysis book ever written, in my opinion, the one by Kreisig. So all great books on functional. This is the easiest one. Then you get weird stuff like piecewise linear topology. That is definitely wizard level, not something you've probably even heard of. Analytic topology, again, something that you've probably never seen. This is the one by Wyburn. Topics in ring theory by Barche. Very, very advanced book on ring theory. Algebraic number theory by Weiss. Again, very advanced stuff. And then we have another book here, Hilbert Spaces by Ber Berberian. Classic book. Abelian Varieties by Serge Lang. Serge Lang is one of my favorite authors. I collect his books, and that's actually why I have this book, uh, Abelian Varieties. So super advanced stuff that only wizards study. Differential geometry is something that could considerably be level three because a lot of people see it as an undergrad, but I threw it into level four because most people don't see differential geometry as undergrads. It's not taught at most schools. It's not something that's typically taught. So it's a little bit more niche. So I threw it into the graduate level. Algebraic topology, that's definitely grad level. This is super hard stuff. This is the graduate level book on abstract algebra. And I included it here because of that, but you can use this as a beginner. Nevertheless, for the amount of content it has, it's definitely wizard material. Topology of manifolds, 
Again, super advanced stuff here. Real and complex analysis. This is by Walter Rudin. This is called Papa Rudin. The Baby Rudin is the Principles of Mathematical Analysis book we saw earlier. This teaches you measure theory, and it's a very, very hard book, and it's a very good book. Algebra by Hungerford. I like this book. I know some people don't. I'm a big fan of this book. Methods of the functions of several complex variables. So earlier we saw a complex analysis book by Saf and Snyder. That's for a single complex variable. This one covers several complex variables. So the math is way more advanced. In fact, many schools don't even teach this stuff. It's so advanced. And that's true for a lot of these topics. Functional analysis, a short course. That's a great book. A book on variational analysis. This is super advanced. Algebraic extensions of fields. Look at that. Beautiful. Another measure theory book. This is the one, again, by Halmos. It's a different edition. And over here we have analytic function theory by Hill. So you can see these books here contain topics that are just super advanced. So you definitely want to have a strong command of mathematics before you can become a wizard. So that's level four, a mathematical wizard. Hopefully after watching this video, you can become better at mathematics. And I'm really curious, what level are you at? Do you feel like you're at level one, level two, level three, or level four? Let me know in the comments below. Good luck and become a mathematical wizard.